series on empowerment in regards to our astral projection experiences, taking control. That, to me, is what it's all about because you are already in control of these experiences. Today, I'd like to talk about strategies to deal with fear. And for me, I want to initially, I think it's important to initially talk about fear itself in dealing with it. There have been so many times that I have seen uh, responses uh, from people that um, they were responding to someone saying, well, I'm afraid, you know, I don't know what's going to happen out there. You know, are there evil entities? Uh, will I be able to get back into my body? That sort of thing. And, you know, people will respond saying, well, you know, you just need to conquer your fears as if your fears are some kind of enemy to be conquered, some sort of opposing force that you need to conquer, that you need to battle in order to win over. And my whole uh, way of looking at this is completely different. For those of you who have been on this channel, you know that my the way I think about fear is that fear, number one, fear is not our enemy. Not our enemy. Fear is actually there to protect us. For example, think very quickly what happens if you were to hear a gunshot and it was very near you. Out of fear, you would run probably in the opposite direction unless you are a police officer. You would run for cover. That's fear. Fear is there to protect us. And I don't think of fear as an opposing force. The way I think of fear, I think of it in this way. It is definitely a part of us. So we have these three parts, right? I guess perhaps I can use this as a sort of an example. So we have the part of us that wishes to go out and explore the astral plane. And that's a very powerful part. You know, for me, exploration is a very sh powerful pull to go out into the astral plane. Um, you can go to all these different places, all these different worlds, things you can't even imagine. Worlds, uh, beings, all this stuff. So you have that part of you, right? That's sort of one side. Then you have the other side of you, the fearful part the part of you that is worried about all of the unknown things that could happen. Again, perhaps there are entities out there that want to do you harm or what happens if uh, you can't get back into your body. Two things that I personally know from all the experience that I've had, at least on my end, I've never had an issue with that, but I can understand why those there would be people out there that would fear it because most of those people have never actually experienced astral projection. And the unknown is a very powerful uh, part of fear and why we fear things. So I can completely 100% understand that. Now, between those two opposing forces, fear and then the part of you that wants to go out there and explore, there is a middle part that I would like you to take. And that job is as ambassador. And I want you to take a moment to perhaps think of yourself as an ambassador for those two opposing sides of you. And your job as an ambassador is to make peace between the part of you that wants to explore and the part of you that is afraid. You want to bring those two parts together, right? And the only way I believe to do that is to, through negotiation, convince the fearful part, hey, there is nothing to be afraid of. Now, this may take time. This isn't something that 
will necessarily be over with in a flash. You won't be able to necessarily do it, you know, in a day or two days and weeks, maybe even a month. It all depends on you. You should never rush this process. This is something that I believe that if you are afraid, if you are experiencing crippling fear in regards to this, but you still want to do it, you need to first and foremost take your time. It'll be there when you're ready, but it's important to take your time and be patient. So many people... <laughs> In the 21st century, they have no patience. They want everything right now. But with this, you, I believe you have to have some patience when it comes to this stuff. Now, I wanted to talk about two of the things that I see a lot out there. Um, two things that people really talk about in regards to the astral plane and the fears they have about going out. Number one, the first thing is when they get out there, they have this fear that they're going to encounter evil entities that might want to harm them, grab them, kidnap them, whatnot. You can go through, I don't have to go through all the different scenarios. Um, our fears can go through all those scenarios and think about all the things. So I don't have to go through all of them, but I'm sure you get the point. So let's talk about that. I'll, I'll talk about my experience and I can only really go by the way, guys, with my experience, of course. And first of all, in the 40 plus years of me doing this, I have never encountered an entity that wanted to harm me. Now, there have been times that I have misinterpreted something that a being has done. And after thinking about it, I thought, well, this being wasn't time trying to hurt me. There have been times I believe that beings have just wanted to connect with me, that just wanted to speak with me. And I was afraid, so I didn't allow it to happen. And I've made videos, especially in the beginning, I made videos about being afraid of other spirit beings when I have been out there and I've pushed them away. And now to a certain extent, I kind of regret doing that because, you know, who knows what they may have had to offer to me or what I might have been able to offer to them. I think over the years I've evolved and I have um, become more open to these things. Now, this is not to say, by the way, and I wanna make sure I make this clear, this is not to say that there are not beings in the astral plane that are angry and hateful, they're bitter, uh, jealous, all of these negative things, and they carry it with them. And, you know, there's not to say that those people are like that. And most of those beings are just kind of in their own kind of um, existence and dealing with their own stuff. And they're not necessarily out there messing with other beings. But is it possible that you might encounter a being like that? Sure. For the most part, my thing is to avoid those types of beings and not get into it. And one of the things that you can do for that is to really absorb, absorb, excuse me, <laughs> observe your instincts to really rely on them. This is something I've talked about before. Instinct is a very powerful thing, guys, especially when you're in the astral plane. Your gut will tell you the truth. Your guides will too. Your guides are there to guide you and to protect you. And so it's important to connect with them as soon as possible, especially in the very beginning, they will help you. I think of them almost like bouncers. Um, and I've talked about this before. They are bouncers at this club and you can consider this club to be this space around your spirit being. And they will not allow beings that are troublemakers to go past them. They will not allow them in. So that is another thing. 
Another suggestion is to imagine a white light around you as you are attempting to go out of your body. This is something that I have done since I was small. It comes naturally to me now, and I don't mention it, and I haven't mentioned it a lot. I think I have mentioned it in previous videos um, with technique in regards to leaving your body, but it is something that I've done since I was small and something that I had heard about, and I do believe that can also be helpful. These are all layers to help to keep you secure, but more importantly, it will help you feel more secure, which will keep you secure because in the end, guys, you are in control. And that's what the series is all really about is that you are in control. You have the power in all of this. And that's what I want you to understand. You are in control. The other thing, and this is something that I've seen come up. Can you get trapped outside of your body? Is it possible that you won't be able to re-enter? And in my experience, again, 40 plus years, I have never had an issue getting back into my body. If anything, my issue has always been, how do I stay out longer? <laughs> Because the body has a tendency to pull the spirit being back in, at least in my case. So I have never had an issue with this. As long as you are a living, breathing being on this planet, your body and your spirit being are deeply connected to one another. Also, there is this thought, I think, that people think of it almost as if you are leaving a house empty and locked. And then when you return, somehow, some way, you are unable to unlock the doors and get back in. And my thought is that your spirit being is still in that house, but also outside of that house and exploring. In other words, it can be at two places at once, and my belief it can, is that it can be in an infinite number of places at once. I know in our minds, being in this world, we think of things um, as if you can't be in more than one place at one time. You can't be at your house and then at the store and then someplace else all at the same time. You can only really occupy one space at a time. But in the spirit realm, in the astral plane, my belief is that that rule does not exist. We can be in multiple places. So I believe that we're not actually really leaving. We are and we're not. Parts of us are going out there and parts of us are remaining right here and parts of us are in an infinite number of places. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about with this, with these strategies, and I will be doing more videos on fear because I think that it is an important subject and something that we need to cover more than once because, you know, again, I know that there are people that may be struggling with this, that are hearing this, that may not even want to comment and talk about it. And that's perfectly fine. I want to give an example of something that we are afraid of, many of us are afraid of um, in, this, in this society and many cultures are afraid of, the primal fear of darkness. So many people are afraid of the dark, I think because they can't necessarily see. If you're in a pitch black area and you can't see, you don't know what could come out to grab you or to get you and there is that fear that something could, it's the unknown again, something that's in the shadows. But let me ask you this. In the time you've been astral projecting, how much luck do you have or do you think you would have if you had bright light in your face <laughs> as you were lying down and you were trying to leave your body? 
right? Think about that for a second. Like daylight all in your face. How many of you do you, how many of you think you would be able to leave your body at that point? I know that I wouldn't be able to, but in the darkness, in the darkness, it makes it much easier to do this. It makes it much easier to open our third eye and to actually see. So in a sense, in regards to exploring the astral plane, darkness gives us clarity because in the darkness, it allows us to filter out all the other things and focus on that realm, the astral plane. So it is a sort of illumination, I think, in a way. I don't know that uh, analogy. I don't know if it's clear to you guys or not, and perhaps I'm not putting it in the correct way, but I do see darkness as another form of illumination, but in a different way than light. And so therefore, really, there's no reason to be afraid of the darkness because it does assist us in other ways. Okay, guys, I'm going to end it here. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. I will be continuing this series in future videos. Until next time, take care.